What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I had the wonderful Mr. Jeanette down over at Massachusetts reaching out about how to make this Christmas tree. I figured, you know what, man? We're going to make a video for you and share it out to the world to see how to design this Christmas tree. Uh, a couple things you wanted specifically is uh, looking at an overlap, looking at a particular pattern, something easy to make out of the shop, and um, let's just go ahead and make it. So I'm going to hit on the Create tab. I'm going to create a new sketch. We're going to go to this front plane right here, and then we're going to do some, I would say, not complicated geometry, but definitely some specific geometry. So we're going to draw a line out straight up top. Now this line is going to be a construction line we're going to use later on. So I'm going to right click on it and click on construction. It turns into a dotted line for us, but allows us to reference a center line that we're going to use for a mirror later on. I'm going to go ahead and click on line and then we're just going to draw out. I'm just going to do, let's do 2.5 inches for now. And then let's change what we have going on here. Make sure that our line drawn is going to be a horizontal line drawn. Looks great. And we want to give that, dis that distance between those two lines to be 0 0.75. Remember, anytime we're doing a dimension, I hit that D shortcut key quite a bit. Uh, now, we're going to do a bunch of miter cuts on this. And so we want a 60 degree angle between this line and this line. Similar to the way of putting a linear dimension in. You can actually click between two lines that are at an angle, and it'll automatically populate to the angle dimension. Now, one thing I really like to see here is as we're building this, our geometry is turning black. That tells me it's fully constrained, everything is good, um, we're not too worried about moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Alpha Line. We're gonna draw out the base of our Christmas tree. We're essentially gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna draw a line connecting the top, hit D for dimension, 0.75 thickness, and then create an angle between those two. Let's try that again, D for dimension. Angle between those two lines, we're gonna give it 60 degrees. We do look like you have something else going on here. Uh, well, that's because I didn't put a dimension for our overall. So let's, let's do this as six inches. There we go. We are fully constrained now, and we're good to go. One thing you might have noticed is that when I was noticed that this line was still blue earlier on is how did I, what dimension is missing to make it fully constrained? And if you just drag it, it'll kind of give you a hint on what's not dimensioned. And for me, it was that length of those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's hit that D for dimension again. Let's redo that in. Let's give it six and then we're good to go. We're going to start up our Christmas tree over here, and we're going to do something pretty similar to what we've done before. We're going to draw two lines, L for line. We're going to try to do our best to get these to be 60 degrees. Looks great. We're going to go ahead and set that dimension 6 degrees. Oh, that's, that one's fine. How about this one? We'll set this to 60 degrees. Looks good. And then the distance between those two lines is going to be a quarter inch because we want to keep that thickness there as a quarter, a three quarters inch. Okay. Um, the length of this line, we're going to do five and a quarter. One thing I want to showcase in this is there's a difference between a vertical distance. So you can see that vertical distance right there, a horizontal distance. So you can see right there or an actual line distance if we go up here at an angle. And we want this line to be 5.25. So we want to make sure we're not going to the left or above. We want to make sure we're going off at an angle. And so that way it'll actually give 5.25. And that length there is what we're looking for. And so we're going to do the same thing here. Notice bad clicks, hit undo. Let's try that again. And we're going to keep that length as 5.25. Sweet. And then we can connect the two at the top with just a simple line. As we finish this off, we know a couple things. We see a couple things. Is that our geometry is fully constrained. We got all black lines. Looks great. Um, and that we have a finished closed profile. Since we want to be smart with our geometry and kind of the things we've done so far, we're going to reuse this. But we could use linear pattern and, and try to do some complicated things. However, since I'm not doing a bunch of patterns, I'm just going to do this by using copy-paste. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key, 
click on those three sides here, hit Control C for copy, and then paste. And this allows me to paste those three lines and see it's repeated some of that geometry, it's repeated some of those dimensions. We're just going to put it right next to, we're not going to overlap directly, but pretty close to what we have earlier on. Let's go ahead and draw a line, let's finish that out, looks great. And then we can throw in some other dimensions we need to, but I'm going to do coincident constraint first because I want this corner to be coincident or coincident with that line there. We want it to overlap. We want it to line up. It looks great. And then we'll see what other dimensions we might need, and I believe it's going to be an angle dimension, and then we should be good to go. Okay, just dragging along, see what other things we might need, and it's that distance of overlap. Well, I believe what's going to be asked of me is that we, we want this distance overlap to be a vertical distance here. So notice I clicked on those two lines, and that's going to be 0 0.615. Okay. We're going to do this one more time. I'm going to click on all of this geometry, hold down the shift key, click on all of this geometry, copy, paste. Look at that. Oh man, that's beautiful. Okay. Click OK. Click on coincident up at the top. We're going to have this edge, this corner, this vertex coincident with this line right here. Looks great. D for dimension and do another vertical constraint of 0 0.615. Now my Christmas tree doesn't quite overlap here in the middle on this green line so I'm going to change this number to like let's just say 6 for right now. It does do some funky things and I don't like that so before we do that let's try to throw in another dimension and just keep that as 120 degrees. Actually, yeah, let's just keep that as that for now. Okay. We might have to do some, some funky geometry here in a little bit, but I'll show how we do that. Since we have the left half of our tree done, what we're going to do now is use the mirror command. So I'm going to click on mirror, highlight all of this geometry, click the, select the mirror line to B, that center right there, and that looks pretty good. Okay. Go ahead and click OK. Uh, the right side, for the most part, is exactly what we want. It's just this top right here. We might have to do a little bit of edits. So I'm going to trim this up a little bit. We have this overlap here we don't really need. Okay. And then we are going to do a little bit of extension. So I'm going to extend this line out on both sides. And that gives us a, that nice point right there. Go ahead and trim up that, and we've got our full dimensions here. We might want to go ahead and redimension this just so it's that full line. I'm getting a little sloppy with my clicks there. Let's try that dimension. This full line looks good. Trim it up, and then do one line up the center. Okay. Uh, for the most part, that looks good to me, folks. So we've got from a bunch of full and complete profiles. So if I hover over them, we can see nice and full and complete pieces. Our overlap is exactly as expected. And I think we're good to go. We're now ready to do some of our extrusions. So I'm going to hit E for extrude. And I'm going to select on some pieces that are not touching each other. For depth, we're going to do 3 quarters of an inch. And we're going to do those as new bodies because we want these to stay separate. And rather doing, you know, nine different extrusions, if we click separate bodies and make sure that there's not a join command in there. So we're going to E for extrude. We're going to select a couple more different bodies, 0 0.75. Make sure that for our, under our command prompt, we don't click join, we click new bodies. And this makes sure that our pieces don't get joined as a new, as components or bodies together. It just keeps them separate. We're going to E for one more time, 0 0.75. And then I think I just clicked enter too quickly. That should be a new body. Okay. Make sketch one inactive. 
And there we go, folks. We got our Christmas tree. Looks good. The only thing I'm going to do now is go ahead and hit uh, on our bodies here. I'm going to drop down this menu, highlight all of these. Right click, let's go to physical material. If we're going to make this in the woodshop class, we should assign a material to it, and that's going to be some pine. We're probably going to make this out of some soft pine. So I'm just going to, while all of my bodies are highlighted, drag and drop. It gives it that texture and appearance of pine. Looks all right. We might paint these when we're done, though. So after we assign the physical material, we can hit escape. Let's select all of our bodies except for that bottom one right here. So I'm going to select all of them except for where well, that bottom piece is body four. So let's select all. Hold down the shift key. Deselect body four. We can now hit A for appearance. And let's go for a Christmas green color. Let's find one that looks good. Is this metallic green? How's that look? That looks pretty decent. We could also find something else for our wood. So let's find like a nice cherry finish. Something that looks good for that bottom piece. That way our tree just looks a little bit better. Okay, guys, there you go. That's how we make this Christmas tree, putting all those dimensions in there. Uh, one thing that we do need to be cognizant of is that as we make sketches, we're doing this clean. Uh, we're doing this as using as much repeated geometry in one sketch as possible, and we did that here. Okay, all right, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.